الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنعم على هذه الأمة بإرسال حبيبه الحنيف وألهم أمته بالاحتفال بمولده الشريف نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونشكره تعالى ونستغفره ونستغيثه نعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله وحبيبه وصفيه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة النبي الأمي الذي أرسله الله بالهدى ودين الحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يسلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اتقوا الله فيما أمر وانتهوا عما نهى أنه وزجاء الحمد لله as human beings, as Muslims, we have much for which to be thankful and a great many reasons to rejoice. The fadl and generosity of our Lord and our Creator is truly immense. His gifts to us come in a never-ending flow. Our lives, our senses, our capacities to think and reflect, to talk and communicate, he gives us the food to eat, the clothes to cover our nakedness and protect us from the elements and roofs over our heads. He gives us friends and companions to assuage our loneliness, light with which to see and darkness to help us rest and sleep. He gives us air to breathe and he gives us children to fill our hearts with delight. Each gift more wonderful than the next and all coming to us from one source, the Mun'im himself, subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> Blessings that are more than anyone could possibly count. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا The translation of which is, if you tried to number the blessings of Allah, you could never count them. They come to us from all sides, from where we expect and where we do not, asked for and unasked for, blessings of which we are aware and blessings of which we are not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a wa ja'ala lakum usam'a wa labsara wa laf'ida. The translation of which is, Allah brought you out of your mother's wombs knowing nothing at all, and gave you hearing, sight, and hearts. And he said, وَمِن رَحْمَتِهِ جَعَلَ لَكُمُ اللَّيْلَ وَالنَّهَارَ لِتَسْكُنُوا فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِن فَضْلِهِ The translation of which is, part of his mercy is that he has made both night and day for you, so that you can have your rest and seek his bounty. And he says, وَهُوَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ الْبَحْرَ لِتَاكُلُوا مِنْهُ لَحْمًا طَرِيًّا وَتَسْتَخْرِجُ مِنْهُ حِلْيَةً تَلْبَسُونَهَا وَتَرَى الْفُلْكَ مَوَاخِرَ فِيهِ وَلِتَبْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِهِ The translation of which is, It is he who made the sea subservient to you, so that you could eat fresh flesh from it and bring out from it ornaments for you to wear. And you see the ships cleaving through it so that you can seek his bounty. For all these blessings, Allah asks nothing in return except that we show our thankfulness. Many of the ayats that describe his blessings to us finish with these words, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ The translation of which is, so that perhaps you might show shukr, so that perhaps you might have gratitude, so that perhaps you might show 
thanks. He wants this from us not because he benefits from it, but because without gratitude, we as human beings stall, we stop growing, and we fail to ever reach the lofty potential that is placed within us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ شَكَرَ فَإِنَّمَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ The translation of which is, whoever shows shukr, he only does so to his own gain. And he says, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ The translation of which is, if you have shukr, I will increase you, I will give you increase and growth. The capacity to have gratitude is, in fact, one of the things for which we must be most grateful. To be truly grateful, we must be thankful for all the parts of the process by which that blessing reaches us. We must be thankful to the source, and we must be thankful to the means. Our gratitude to the source takes the form of our praise of him, and our worship of him, especially with that which is superrogatory, the nawafid. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked, why do you stand the night in prayer? And why would you do this when your Lord has given you complete forgiveness for everything that you have done, everything you will ever do? You have nothing on your slate. The Messenger of Allah ﷺ, as we know, has no wrong actions. When he was asked why he did this, he replied, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا shakura." Should I not be a grateful slave? Should I not be a grateful slave? In other words, by means of those actions that he was doing, that worship, he was showing that gratitude which was within his heart. As for our gratitude to the means, that means acknowledging those means and giving them the thanks that is their due. Every blessing that we have in this life comes through a means. Our life comes through our parents, our knowledge and intellectual prowess through our teachers, our healing through doctors or through medicine, our satiation through food and drink, and so on and so forth. If we cannot show thanks for or to these means, then how can we think we are showing gratitude to Allah? One cannot be without the other. Allah says, Anushkur li waliwali daik, the translation of which is, show thanks to me and to your parents. In other words, it is by showing thanks to the parents that your thanks to Allah will come to him. And the Prophet said, La yashkurullaha man la yashkurun nas. The one who has not thanked people has not thanked Allah. And chief among those people whom we must thank is the one who brought us guidance, the greatest gift any can receive, for its beneficial effects extend beyond this world into the next, the Dar al-Baqa, the everlasting abode. That person is the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ونسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين والتابع التابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ما استطعتم واسمعوا وأطيعوا وأنفقوا خيرا لأنفسكم يا عباد الله أوسيكم وإياي بتقوى الله وطاعته وأحذركم وإياي أن معصيته ومخالفته Without the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no one of this ummah would be guided and no action of any one of us would be accepted. Without him we could not have reached the pleasure of our Lord. Every good thing that we have in life is down to Him. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His was the first light and the reason for the coming into existence of creation. As Imam al busayri rahimahullah says in his burda, لَوْلَاهُ لَمْ تَخْرُجِ الدُّنْيَا مِنْ الْعَدَمِ Were it not for him, this world that we know and we see about us, this world would never have emerged from non-existence. For everything we get is from the mercy of Allah. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is the very embodiment of that mercy. For Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ the translation of which is, we did not send you except as a mercy to all the worlds. Describing him as mercy rather than as the normal thing that you describe somebody as the adjective. You describe him as the quality itself. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No living creature has more right to our gratitude and thanks than him. So how do we show him thanks? In all the conventional ways, by acknowledging him and keeping him at the forefront of our thoughts and the forefront of our dua, of our supplication. By praising him and doing salawat upon him. By emulating him and following his instructions and his sunnah. And we do it by celebrating him. Setting aside times where we dedicate ourselves to his mention and to his memory. Does not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا the translation of which is, say, it is the favor of Allah and his mercy that should be the cause of their rejoicing, of their celebration. And is not the mercy of Allah, as the people of, of knowledge have said in their tafsir of this ayah, wa bi Is he not the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He must be the cause for our rejoicing. And what better way could there be for celebrating him than to set aside a day? Is that not the customary way that people show appreciation? Did not the Prophet ﷺ say when the Jews told him that they marked Ashura to show thanks for, the, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rescue of Sayyidina Musa and his people? Nahnu ahaqqu bi Musa minkum. We have more right to Musa than you. And then he instructed his people to themselves commemorate that day annually to show their thanks. And what better day could we choose for our Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam than the day of his birth? Is that not our custom as human beings? Is that not the day we choose to celebrate the presence of those closest to us, our parents and our children? Did not the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself indicate that the birth of someone special on a particular day made that very day special. But when he was asked about the special properties of the day of Jumu'ah, one of the things he said was, Fihi khulipa Adam. It was the day upon which Adam was created. So that fact of Adam's creation on that day made the very day itself special. And did he not too mark the day of his own birth? For when he was asked, why do you fast Mondays? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, Fihi wulid, wa fihi unzila alayhi. It was the day upon which I was born, and the day I received my first revelation. The day that the Muslims have chosen for this purpose, for marking the birthday of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And make no mistake, it is the Muslims who have chosen this as an ummah to the extent that this celebration has become almost universally approved and as Ibn Mas'ud the great companion of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said مَا رَآهُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ حَسَنًا فَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ حَسَنًا وَمَا رَآهُ الْمُسْلِمُونَ قَبِيحًا فَهُوَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ قَبِيحًا what the Muslims see as being good that thing is good in the eyes of Allah and what the Muslims see as being ugly and bad and reprehensible, that thing is ugly in the eyes of Allah. The day the Muslims have chosen is the 12th of the Rabi al Awwal, which is the month that we are in. For that is the day most scholars consider the Messenger of Allah وسلم, to have been born. This year, the night of the 12th of Rabi al Awwal coincides with Saturday night, that is tomorrow night. 
So we will be gathering here in the mosque to celebrate his Mawlid. All are welcome. Come and join us. Help us to take advantage of this wonderful night, of this great opportunity to remind ourselves of our noble messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and remind ourselves of the noble qualities that he possesses and to, get, to help us in giving thanks to our Lord for bestowing him upon us and making us a part of his Ummah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We ask Allah to always us in, increase us in Salawat upon him and make us celebrate him in every moment of our lives. We ask Allah to increase us in love of his Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and give us a true appreciation of his station. And we ask him that he make this coming Mawlid a time of great joy and a time when the Muslims come together and their bro brotherhood shines forth. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhi ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Wa arda Allahumma ani al-khulafa al-rashidin Abi Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali وان خديجة وعائشة وسائر أمهات المؤمنين وسائر الصحابة أجمعين خصوصا الأنصار منهم والمهاجرين والتابعين والتابع تابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين اللهم اهدي ولاة أمور المسلمين لما يرضيك والاتباع سنة نبيك صلى الله عليه وسلم وثبت قدامهم على الصراط المستقيم وأصلحهم يا رب العالمين اللهم بارك على شيخنا وعلى أميرنا وعلى سائر أمراء المسلمين اللهم بارك على المسلمين في هذه المدينة ووفقهم لما تحبه وترضاه يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل الكفر والكافرين وانصر المجاهدين في سبيلك واجعل كلمتك هي العليا وكلمة الكفر هي السفلى ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله